Welcome to the Super Facts Show on the Super Facts Network. I just appreciate you listening. So I'm not going to ask you to follow me on Instagram at Mark Waldo War. I'm not going to ask you to rate and review the show. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe to it. Thank you for your time. What up, world? It's your boy, Mark Waldo War, Super Facts Show, Super Facts Network. Today we got with us a rising hook king, uh, Midwest sensation. Your Honor, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? I, I, I'm chilling, chilling. Um, I, I guess the immediate uh, topic of conversation got got be, um, well, I mean the the know how song, but but just in general, the and us we trust album that you're all over the big half and uh, capital structure put out. Man, what 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 what's the reception like? And then out all them songs that, that you on, it, it's hard for me to pick a favorite. Which one would you say got the uh, biggest, the best reception? Oh, uh, there is a bunch of them on there. I like myself. I would say it would have to be Know How. Um, know How is the highest streaming right now. Um, it seems like it's getting um, engaged a lot, a lot of interactions. That that would be my favorite right now. What, what you know, reading your bio, I see how uh, instrumental uh, Hef has been in, in getting you involved in the, you know, the professional music industry. Um, how would you explain uh, who Big Hef is and his involvement in your career to someone who wasn't hip? Can you repeat the last part of the question? If someone wasn't hip to who Big Hef was, how would you explain uh, basically his resume and his involvement in your career? Oh, man. How would I describe Hef? Um, you know, I'm not one to just throw around words because words carry weight. You know, if I had to describe Hef, um, he honestly is he honestly is the GOAT. Like, you can't say it any other way um, because there's a lot of people that will advertise and tell you they can do this or they connected here. Like he's he's connected and not only is he connected, but he knows what to do with the pieces that he has. Like he's very strategic. Um, if I was just describing him to someone that didn't know him, I would just have to say he to go. Like I and I can't say that about really nobody, but he's he's just the the top of what he does in the city. And people know that he's known for being excellent. You, you, you know how they say uh, jack of all trades, but master of none? Exactly. Like, 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 like he, he, like a master of all trades. Like, like I, I ain't seen nothing in, in, in the music industry. He, he, he ain't really done. You know, like, like there ain't no job. You know. So, so that that being said, what, what what's Capital Structure? And uh, you, you know, how is it that Capital Structure has an album, and how'd you come to be featured so prominently on it? And <laughs> Capital Structure is the team. Like that's that's the squad that uh, Hef began to build um, with with pieces around the city and other mainstream artists. Um, I actually got up with Hef because um, he's always, like I said, been in the city, like locally in Cleveland and coming to shows and doing like a &R work and promoting. Um, I met Hef probably 10 years ago or eight years ago. And um, I vibed with him when I met, like he really liked my voice and my sound. And after a while, he was inviting me to come to the writing sessions for Chris Brown and Beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion and local artists of uh, Ty Bree. So I just love that. And we were reaching success with the writing. So then he just pulled me into Capital Structure a few years ago um, with writing and writing for other like mainstream local artists getting placements. Um, so it's been since then that I've been rocking with Hef uh, capital structure is just a it's a, a dynamic team to me it's a strong force that it takes a lot of firepower to equal so ain't everybody everybody does not have a capital structure under their belt you know what I'm saying <laughs> he's the top of the line in Cleveland when in my opinion no doubt what's a writing session with Beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion what, what's that entail like what's your role and like what's the, what's the whole environment like um you know the environment for me is a little bit separate I guess from all the other artists because what you what you're going to do is have um, a group of artists come together and it's a fast thinking process they're going to play a sound that uh, complements the artist in question then you probably get 10 minutes 15 minutes to write and we review everything that everyone's written and you know have for either like uh I remember as Kia was in one of the sessions um they would basically say, hey, we like this sound, record this, or well, we want to move forward with this. 
get this down. That way we can outsource it. Um, it's just like a, a brainstorm for real. I, I love it. It makes me pumped. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it just gets you all worked up and, and you get the words flying and like uh, the, the feeling of it. Like it's a high energy thing to me. The writing sessions are always dope. I'm always writing under the premise of somebody has to hear this. Like I'm not just here just for the hobby of it. I want to get this to somebody mainstream or that's a big piece on the board because it's a good song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, shit, hell yeah! Uh, shit, from from what I heard, like like you you well on the way there, brother. Like like you 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 gonna be the next hook king. But that that being said, who you like better, Nate Dogg or T Pain for, for the hooks? Because you know T Pain might keep, got him I on the career. I keep hearing that. I I keep hearing uh Cleveland's Nate Dogg. Like everybody keep calling me all all of a sudden. <laughs> but I tell you, he was great too. So shit, I'll take it. But I'm trying to do a little bit more than what he done. But it's a compliment. It, most definitely. But, you know, talking about in Us We Trust Some More and uh, Cleveland, you, you know, you, you do the hook on a song with Bone. And most times when people do a song with Bone, Bone on the hook. So, like, w w what's that feel like? That, that that must be monumental to somebody out there. Yeah, the, the, the way that the Bone Project came together was great because that was when I first started working um, with Hef. So I actually wrote the hook um, after I got the beat through Hef. I wrote the hook, and I really wanted to get it to Bone Thugs and Harmony. That was my end game. Like I said, when I write, I kind of go for the jugular. I want it to fit a certain artist, and when they hear it, I want them to be like, yeah, I need that, no questions asked. So I wrote the hook, uh, The Land. I really wanted it for Bone, but um, my boy, Chris with a K, shout out to him. He's uh, cousins with Crazy Bone, so... I thought I have an avenue there, but I also work with Kane, which is a big Cleveland artist. And once he heard it, um, his manager heard it and he was just like, yeah, this is for bone for sure. So it ended up playing out the, the best way possible um, that I, that I would have imagined. So bone ended up getting on the track and it was one of them. Then it was two of them. Then it was four of them and Kane. So it, it came together pretty well. We ended up getting DJ step floss on it. Um, that was something else to have orchestrated by the time the track was finished. It was just a, a complete sound. Like it was, it was a hit. Man, I, I know you believe in manifestation, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or speaking about DJs, is that you on the, um, the hit it, the DJ Ryan Wolf, Soldier Boy? Yes, sir. Yes. I also wrote that one as well. Yes, sir. Damn, that, 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 that should go ridiculously hard. That, that, that's that Cat Philly Ferrari, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Ferrari, boy. He be going. Yeah, yes, he, sir. He, he nice, but that being said, it seemed like y'all got a nice uh, little, little symbiotic relationship. Like, like I, I love the, you, you know, you before we started, you was telling me some uh, kids in Florida was was dancing when they heard Black Forces, another Philly Ferrari thing, which is which is um, from what I heard so far, um, my my favorite song song of yours, and and that that hook is fucking ridiculous. But you said Black Forces is your favorite. So far, I mean, nice, I, I, nice, I got, nice, I got nice. feel, I got feeling the best yet to come, though. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. There's, there's so much uh, music in motion. Uh, people are asking me about "In Us We Trust," and they're asking me about the cap, the movie, and the soundtrack coming out. That's the thing that's good about Hef. I think that's where we vibe at because even though the work's there and it's sitting, we're working on something else. It's just what's happening now. What are we doing now? He's always looking ahead of the board. And I'm very excited about the projects coming out, but I just know that they've been ready and we're working on something else. You know what I'm saying? It, it, uh, do, you, do you have plans on a, a solo project? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, outside of writing for uh, others, um, I'm like a 50s, 60s, 70s, old school R&B kind of guy myself. Um, I do have a project out on Apple and uh, YouTube and others like streaming sites called I Am R&B, which was very R&B and pop. So I am definitely going to go back to that lane. And I want to do some music that people just can't duplicate. I'm going to have my own lane in doing so. But yeah, absolutely. It's in the works. Damn, I looked you up on Spotify. I missed that one. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, and I'll send you, I'll shoot you some links as well, too, because I would, I would love for you to check it out. Because I saw on Spotify you got that uh, single from 2014, and, 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 and 
I, I was like, man, he, he could definitely carry a song by himself. I, I want, I want to hear like a whole, a, the whole lot, you know. Absolutely, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. that, that, be, that being said, is there any, any, uh, any chance you might make like a, a, a full length version of Black Forces, like, like more of a, sing, a song ver, you know, you know, like an R and B version as opposed to a rap version? I would, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, you know, a lot of the songs that I work on. It's just and maybe it's the process that I follow, but I'll literally turn on a beat that I really like and I'll play it for a half day. Even though I come up with the lyrics, as soon as I hear the beat, I already know what it should say. But I'll, I'll play the song for days on end or even when I'm sleeping. And by the time I wake up, I feel like the song is just in my system. So I would definitely uh, a lot of the songs I work on, honestly, I want to keep. But it's just like, yeah. you know, I'm under the under the premise of working for others. But, um, yeah, I, I would certainly like to do that with a couple of the songs that we have. No, I, I, I can dig it. I can definitely see that. And, and reading your uh, biography, it, it said that you uh, had some involvement with the Cleveland Orchestra. What, what, what was that about? Oh, man, the Cleveland Orchestra. Uh, I actually was able to work with the Cleveland Orchestra through my high school teacher, uh, Rick Fortney which is my favorite teacher I've had. He's the music instructor, and he he's taught me a lot about music. Um, he actually was able to get me to sing with the Cleveland Orchestra. We did the play Carmen, and I was okay. the only person with a solo in Carmen, and I was very, very happy about it. That happened to me earlier on, uh, probably around 18. So, like, that was uh, solidifying the fact that, hey, we're going to move forward with music. And I'm never gonna let it go. It was a big thing for me. You you, you seen the old school Carmen? Yes. Uh huh. Man, I, I that's funny you brought that up. I was trying to find that on streaming like 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 two weeks ago. Like like I, I remember I watched that back in the day, and I wanted I wanted to see it. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it holds up, but I I remember those songs in there that just go ridiculously hard. Man, I I I'm a big fan of uh, classical music, orchestra, cathedral. It's beautiful music. It really is. And sometimes you can listen to uh, cathedral or orchestra music and it doesn't have words, but all of the instruments are still telling the story. Or you can either gather your own feelings to make your own story in your mind. But I really love, really love that kind of music. It, it lets you breathe. I love it. Hey, let, let me ask you a philosophical question then, because yeah. that, 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 that's a good point. But you know how, like we attack. You said uh, the music can tell the story without a, a story without having lyrics. Mm -hmm. So, so like you know, like when they score a movie, right? And it's kind of like the same kind of tone as for like the movie, the part before you're supposed to be scared or before something bad's gonna happen. Are, are you with me? Yes, yes, sir. Do, do you think that the music, like, like we, we, we that we attach the music to those emotions because we're familiar with people doing that, or, or do you think that the music really sounds like the emotion, like like the emotion created the sound of the music? <sighs> I guess that's a tough question. It depends on the situation. Oh, yeah, that's um, definitely like a tree in the forest type question. That's more of a philosophical thing, you know? I, I would I would say, me personally, uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess my emotion leads to me, then it spills on to music. So depending on how I feel is how I would, what kind of music I'm going to listen to or how I'm going to gauge music. Um, Oh, that's kind of a tough question to answer, actually. That's tough. I think, I, think about that I, I, I got an example. I never thought of that until you just said this shit. Like, this ain't on my little questions or whatever. But, like, uh, when, when I, I heard trumpets and, and felt that they were regal before I even knew what a fucking king was. So I, I put the emotion first. Oh, okay. Okay. But, okay, you know, I see what you mean. I, I, I might have to think about that shit some more. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question because I kind of get a little bit of both. It goes both ways for me, honestly. Yeah, because, I mean, music can definitely create emotion as opposed to the emotion creating the sound. So. Man, it's it's so weird, like, just to piggyback off what you said, because you could you could listen to a song, and it that's the, that's the beauty of music. You can listen to a song, and it completely changes your emotion. It could help you if you're in a bad mood, or, honestly, it could change a good mood to a bad mood. So it, it works that way. Then in the same sense, if you're in a particular mood, then you cut on music that's going to uplift you or give you an adverse effect, you're creating the emotion. You're like exacerbating what you feel. So it kind of does go both ways. Like that's a hell of a question. <laughs> hey, talk, talk about, uh, you know, a song putting you in a, in a bad mood. Man, you know that song Brandy where they be talking about the dog? 
the dog that died. What song is it? Brand, uh, Brandy. It's on like Guardians of Galaxy. I think it's I think it's a uh, Levert, but it, it's the OJ's or the Commodores or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, what, what, it sounds like a love song, but when you know it, it's about a dog that died. Uh, Brandy. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it's the OJ's, but uh, I, it's on it's on like I said, it's on Guardians of the Galaxy too. But I, I was in a good mood. and I heard that shit the other day, and that shit make you know anytime you think about a dog dying, that shit make a motherfucker sad and shit. <laughs> hey, music music is like that because it um that's how music and emotions they do run hand in hand because shit I lost my father like a year ago and before he was he passed away all of the music that he liked cuz he's like a really country guy so all of the country music just reminds me of him and it gives me that southern feel now when i hear the shit it's just like oh here come tears falling out my face it it changed the effect of when i hear the song so it, music to me personally is it's like damn near tied to emotion. Like you, there's no way to really separate the two, especially if you're a musician. Yeah, word, word. So uh, you know, outside of all the writing and promoting and us, we trust. What, what what's the next thing we should expect from? You? Hmm. Well, right now, uh, I know Wolfie DJ Ryan Wolf. He's working on a mixtape that we need stuff for, that we need tracks for. Um, I'm working on my solo project. Um, I'm also writing for um, for Layla, um, which is also under Capital Structure. Just writing. Like, I, I have to keep writing. I have to keep writing to stay ahead of the curve. But I'm very, very much so uh, excited for my own project to come out pretty soon. I, I want to say it probably in another eight months because it is going to take time to gather, gather it the way that I want it to be presented. But um, just uh, my project in general. It's like my big future thing. And what's the best place for the fans to interact with you on social media? Everything, Your Honor, Y-U-R-H-O-N-O-R. -O -O um, I do have, I'm because I'm a goofy dude, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. So I do have a personal page as well. Um, and that's under Vegan Tupac, V-E-G-A-N-T-U-P-A-C. Um, but for everything music, Your Honor, just search Your Honor on all platforms. My, my man, hey, congratulations on your success so far and uh, the bright future you got ahead of, of you. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you spending time with me. No, no doubt, man. I look forward to doing a couple more in the future. Maybe when that solo album come out. Yes, sir. You got to let me know when you come down to the land, man. I love the link with you. All right. That, that, that's a bet, man. Say less, man. Thank you so much for your time. Man. Take it light. You too. Have a good day, sir. You too.